Um, so I want to talk to you today about um, technology metals, um, talk about vanadium and, and how that fits into, uh, I guess, a plan of future as we move towards net zero and the importance of, of uh, vanadium as a critical metal. And then, and then talk about our project, our world-class project here in, uh, in WA. Um, auspicious day in WA today with the uh, border opening for, for the first time in about two years. So we've no longer got a hard border, free to travel, which is fantastic. Um, I'd also you know, spare a thought for, I guess, the, the people of Ukraine who are suffering um, something that you can't possibly get your head around um, in, in these modern times, what they're going through at the moment. So, um, but I'll uh, move through and, and talk about uh, technology metals and, and why you should be investing in, in our company and, and our project. Um, World-class asset in a, in a, a top tier of, um, jurisdiction here in Western Australia. Um, vanadium, and, and I'll talk about it a bit later on, a little bit of titanium on the side. Um, two, two deposits that form into the Metricent Technology Metals Project. Um, completed a DFS on the Gabinet, the portion of the, of the project. Um, last cost quartile, fantastic metrics. Um, already had a lot of offtake in place around that. And importantly, we're very advanced on progressing through to actually starting a mine. We've got our mining license granted and the, the environmental approvals are very advanced as well. So having uh, submitted our ERD into the WA EPA last month after what's um, been over a three year process so far. So it's been a really good uh, constructive process moving through all that. And I will talk a fair bit about vanadium and, and what it means for, I guess, our future energy, energy solution, but also emissions reduction over time. Um, Corporate overview, um, we, we, uh, we, we had a, a really good uh, capital raise back end of last year where we got Resource Capital Fund 7 came on board as a, a, a cornerstone investor. They're sitting there with around about 18% of the register now. We raised $20 million over that course of that capital raise and, and at the end of the calendar year, we had $21.7 million cash at bank. Um, we've had a little bit of a run up in our share price this week, um, thanks to the uh, Vanadium price starting to uh, to move in the right direction for us. So it's been very, very positive. Um, but you can see a relatively um, tight capital structure. We listed in uh, December 2016, so a bit over five years, but still only just a touch over 200 million shares on issue. So we've been very focused with our spend and trying to maintain that, uh, that really nice tight uh, capital structure. Um, I won't dwell too much on the board. We've been a fairly consistent board other than the one change of Jackie Murray coming on board after the capital raise with, uh, with RCF. Fantastic addition to the team, um, really good value add on, on the board. And importantly, on the bottom line there, David English returning to us. Um, he was involved with the Gabinet the Feasibility Study. He's returned to us as Chief Operating Officer to move the project through to implementation and, and, and commissioning. Um, David's had extensive experience in, in building mines in Western Australia, but also experience at the Windamurra Vanadium Project here in WA as well. So it brings a lot of value to the team as we move forward. Um, the uh, ESG, very, very important part of everything we do, or always has been, always will be, um, key focus on, on, on all those components. We, we're going to have a, a project in this part of the world that's going to be in operation for, for decades. You know, we're going to be talking about something like a 25-year mine life to start with, and then we'll go from there. So really important that we establish ourselves on the right basis in our community. We, we look after the environment we're operating in and obviously our, our government safety, making sure that uh, we look after our, our people. So a, a big focus of the team. Um, about the strategic plan, I guess it's really all about vanadium and, and bringing vanadium, you know, developing the vanadium industry in Australia. Um, it is a strategic critical metal. It's um, recognised around the world in that phase. Um, North Americans, Japanese, Europeans, uh, they've all focused on vanadium as one of the critical minerals. And um, you know, part of that is the role it plays in steel. So the, the, using a little bit of uh, vanadium in steel helps you reduce, um, I guess, emissions by using less steel for purpose. So you can actually cut your emissions down by that. And there's been some work done out of Texas A&M that, that really underlines the benefit of using vanadium in steel, in, in uh, construction steel particularly, and what that does from emissions reduction. So as we go forward, more vanadium in, in rebar is going to be very positive for using less, less coal uh, to make the steel. Um, but also, uh, you know, the real growth space is in these large-scale batteries, large-scale stationary storage batteries, the VRFB, and that's where we're very excited about that and very excited about being part of that uh, development of that industry here, here in Australia and, and I guess the, the broader Australasian region. Um, 
The bottom chart there shows the, the move up we've seen in the in the vanadium price of, of, of late. Um, it was already um, moving quite nicely um, in Europe. And I think what's happened between Russia and Ukraine in the last uh, couple of weeks has really accelerated that uh, that movement. But sitting currently at about 11.50 a pound, um, shows there our, our operating costs from the cabinet, the DFS, around about $4 a pound. So clearly a very, very strong um, margin at the mine gate from that. Um, whoop, sorry. What have I done there? All right. Um, so about the vanadium market itself, and I guess this slide just really um, is putting into context, you know, I guess suppose the geopolitical situation around vanadium, the top chart, the top pie chart shows production by region in 2021. 62% of production comes from China, followed then by South Africa and the CIS, Russia. Um, so we can see there 8% of, of 21 production, 2021 production came from Russia. So um, if things don't uh, work out so well in this kind of conflict, um, you can see a real um, production disruption or, or supply disruption coming from, from that side of things. But even without that, you can see very concentrated market into some, some, uh, some areas of the world where some of the, I guess the, the Western countries may not necessarily need to be uh, wanting to be uh, getting their supply from. Bottom chart shows where most of the consumption is. Um, China again dominates that side, but you, you know, then Europe and North America, who aren't major producers of vanadium, they jump in as, as big consumers. And on the right hand side there, we've got, thanks to Terry Pearls, a, a forecast projection out to 2025 on the forecast supply and demand. And you can see, based on the, 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 uh, his, his forecast, his predictions, um, we've got to establish a lot more production in vanadium. Now that, that new production is going to come from existing producers expanding, or it's going to come from perhaps some idle capacity coming back online, but there's going to be a big requirement for new primary production. And that's where TMT and our Murchison Technology Metals Project is positioned perfectly at the front of, I guess, the taxi rank, as the previous talk was, was speaking about, um, because we're sitting there with a project that's very advanced very, very close to being fully permitted and, um, and re ready to move into, into fin final financing and, and, uh, and development in a, in a rising market. So ideally situated. Um, redox flow batteries, that's, as, as I say, that's a big part of where we see growth in the Canadian market. Large scale stationary storage batteries. Um, people have heard me you know, speak about these previously. Um, as opposed to a lithium battery, they don't degrade over time. So whatever capacity you have in that battery will, will be retained over the life of the battery, which the, the, the icon on the far right hand side talks about that. It could be up to 20 years of capacity of, of, of life on these batteries. A couple of the other real keys there are safety. It's a liquid in electrolyte, so you don't have any, any thermal runaway, you don't have fire risks at all in these batteries. And the sustainability side, and it goes back to the ESG that we're all focusing on very much these days. Um, the vanadium in these in these batteries, the vanadium in the electrolyte is almost 100% recyclable. So, so you've got this continual reuse of the vanadium that goes into these batteries. So it's a, a very very green and positive uh, um, attribute. And you know these are going to be linked to large scale renewable energy um, applications, um, uh, peak peak storage, um, grid stabilisation, fantastic applications as we move and make this transition away from hydrocarbons into into more and more renewable energy sources. Um, I've just put this slide in because it, it really does demonstrate that you know, this isn't a new technology. This is a technology that was developed in the University of New South Wales in the mid 1980s. There's currently 146 of these batteries either installed or being installed around the globe. And what we've seen in the last 6, 12, 18 months is a real acceleration in, in the, the I guess, deployment of these. And I've just put a couple of snips on the side there about, about you know, news flow that's happened just this year. Um, so, a battery and, and a PV um, going into, into Canada. Um, so my time I've been working on a, on a, a battery and, and a demonstration plant down in California. And then we've got the big battery in, in, uh, in China, in Dalian that Longcore Energy are developing. So that's at its first stage, which is 100 megawatt, 400 megawatt hour capacity. So that's a massive battery, massive power station effectively. So first stage of that is, is in the commissioning phase now, and then they're moving to double that size of that battery. So a lot happening in that space. You see on the on the left hand side the, the breakdown of where all those batteries are. And China again dominates, but you see right down the bottom, the United States is also 
very much at the forefront of that. And, and the West Coast of the US really is, is driving that. So really, really massive opportunity. And, and we see a, a big opportunity for us to be a big part of that. And that's where our, our electrolyte strategy comes in. Now we've, we've partnered up with LE System out of Japan who, who have got all the IP and the technology and leading forefront of research into the electrolyte and also the BRFB. So we're working with them to develop um, our own capacity here in, in WA and, and potentially on the Eastern Seaboard of Australia to take our high purity, um, low cost vanadium product from the MTMP and convert that through to vanadium electrolyte to then help to, to really establish and grow the vanadium redox flow battery industry here in Australia. So we will have a really good competitive cost advantage by having our own really low cost feed going into that process. So a really, really key for, component for us and that whole sustainability of, of driving that product through all the way through to the vanadium electrolyte. Um, the project itself, um, the key to it all, um, you know, this is, you know, getting this developed enables us to do this downstream activity. So without the project, the downstream just is not as, uh, is not as attractive. Um, so the project um, sitting up there near Megathara in the Midwest of Western Australia, um, fantastic location, very supportive of mining and, and all those things that you expect from the West Australian side of things. Um, really large, high grade, um, resource there, 1.1% B205 um, is, is very, very significant grade in, in situ. Importantly, the 50 million tonnes at 0.9% of measured and indicated resource. So that's what I say, that's going to support something like a 25 year operation. Now, stepping through to each of those projects, Gavin Intha, DFS completed. Um, at current pricing, um, which we, you know, the, the main price is back, you know, it's actually higher than what we used in the feasibility study back in 2019. But that pricing from that, that feasibility study supported a $1.3 billion um, MPV and an IRR of 34% on Gavin Inther as a standalone development. Now, what we've done is we've, we're looking at in, integrating um, the satellite deposit, Yarrabubba, into that overall um, development. So the engineering, all the detail has been done for Gavin Inther. What we're doing is saying, what's the impact of bringing this other deposit into that? And one of those is extending the mine life. Um, the other one is we expect to really improve on the, the financial metrics because Yarrabubba delivers us a high grade feed into that plant. So that's, uh, that's going to, to reduce our operating costs, extend the life and really make a, a very, very attractive uh, proposition for financing. The other real interesting thing at Yarrabubba, which we don't get at Gavin Inther, is we'll be able to produce a, a, a titanium byproduct. So um, a, an additional revenue stream coming out from the Yarrabubba side of things. So inter integration study on, underway at the moment. So we're heading for that to be completed by uh, the middle of this year. So Gavin Inther itself, a lot, lot of words on the left-hand side and the right-hand side just really shows the layout of the site. Um, the key things for, for us in that slide Shallow oxidation profile, which is really important when we come to our processing, um, the cost and capital side of processing, um, having very little oxidized material is a very, very attractive component of this project. Um, premium high purity, um, being able to deliver something greater than 99% purity really sets us up nicely for feeding straight into that electrolyte side of the business. So fantastic and gives us a bit of leverage against lower purity producers. Um, and then the third last bullet point, which I've already mentioned, mining licenses are all granted. Environmental approvals are tracking along really well with our, our final ERD submitted last month. So we're, we're really moving along to be in a position where all the permitting, everything's in place to actually press the button and, and build this mine. But now the satellite Yarrabubba, um, again, a lot of words on the left-hand side about all that. Cross-section shows um, fantastic geometry of an ore body. So open pit mining or at surface, again, very shallow oxidation profile. So we're straight into really high yielding, um, low cost material um, very early in the mine life there. Um, very thick zones of, of high grade mineralization. So really, really attractive. Um, delivers a higher concentrate grade. And as I said before, enables us also to produce a titanium um, byproduct. So we're, we're doing the integration study, which is what we're talking about in this next slide. You can see there, you know, the Arabova sits about 20 kilometers to the southeast of, of Gavin Intha. So we'll be hauling the, the, uh, the ore up to the, up to the processing circuit. Um, we're in the middle of this integration study of how these things all fit together, the scheduling of it all. It's, it, it looks like we're going to have Yarrabubba as our initial feed, or early stage feed going into, the, into that circuit and then getting the benefit of that higher grade and the uh, titanium as, a, as a, you know, two revenue streams, which I, as I say, is going to make it a very, very attractive uh, funding proposition. So that's all in train. Um, 
we've been really well supported over, over a period of time now as we've been progressing the development of our projects. Um, WA government has been fantastic in its support for future battery industry, CRC, which is doing research into the uh, in vanadium electrolyte and vanadium redox flow battery sector. Um, really big, strong support of our downstream processing options. Um, talking with NAIF, uh, the federal government funding agency around, around potential debt funding and support for development of the project and talking to other federal government agencies in that same space. Um, already talked about the, the EPA, we've had a really constructive relationship with the EPA as we've moved our project through from concept all the way through to now delivering our, our final ERD, so it's a really fantastic um, position to be in. And then some really key, um, I guess, vendors and, and development partners, APA, which will be supporting us on, on delivery of gas to the uh, to the project, FL Schmidt, who are the leaders in the uh, development of roasting kiln technology for vanadium projects. You know, they've, they've been engaged now as our, our vendor of choice and also doing all the test work around our, um, around our, our roasting side of things. So really strong engagement there. And then on the, on the far right hand side, just you know, working through with offtake, working through with partners, working through both in delivering product into the steel industry, which is 90% of vanadium supply at the moment, but also really closely aligned with uh, vanadium redox flow battery, um, I guess, end users and as well as the electrolyte guys to really help to build that side of, of our business. So the timetable and news flow, um, we've got a lot going on. We're, we're in the middle of this integration study and that, you know, they're all the, the yellow boxes, basically, all the work we're doing around that. Um, we've just finished a, uh, a diamond drilling campaign up at Yarrabubba. So that, that program was designed to infill the resource as well as provide more sample for large scale bulk um, test work to, to support the funding scenarios. Um, so that will all flow through. We'll have a resource upgrade there. We're going to bring a new reserve out for Yarrabubba, which will then provide that support around the full reserve position for the, the MTMP. Um, and then you know, on track to be delivering an integration study mid-year. And you know, we're, we're looking to align the environmental approvals, the EPA um, part four approvals up, up with that. Um, and then really we're, once that's all in, in place, we're in a position then to make the development decision, which is uh, targeted for the second half of this year. And then uh, you know, looking at uh, moving forward from there. So I guess in summary from all of that, um, globally significant, one of the largest, highest grade undeveloped Canadian projects in the world. And we're, we're fortunate to be located in tier one jurisdiction of Western Australia. Critical metal is going to deliver a, a lot of, uh, I guess, benefits into our know, whole move to net zero and reducing emissions. And, and you know, I guess all of the Western world and has identified vanadium as, as one of its critical metals. So really key to support from, from the development side of place. Fantastic team in place, and we're, we're building that team as, as we build momentum on the studies and move towards implementation. Um, attracting RCF7 onto the register last year was a, a really big achievement for us and very, very positive to have, have that you know, strategic investor sitting on our register that's going to help with, uh, again, moving, that, uh, moving the project forward. Um, big focus on delivery and, uh, and getting that project in that shovel ready and then moving into, into that development phase. And you know what a great place to be working here in WA. Even though we've uh, had our border closed for the last two years, we've been able to continue operating and and, and achieve some fantastic results uh, as an industry. And uh, certainly uh, a really good place to be operating. And now the border's open, we can actually start to travel, and we can come and visit you, Timothy, and uh, go and visit some of uh, some of the clients up in uh, in Singapore. So. Thank you very much for all of that and uh, my details there. Happy to uh, have a chat uh, if anyone wants to reach out and uh, certainly if there's any questions at the moment. Thank you.